All right, this is fifth grade, module five, lesson 13. And in this lesson, students are going to be continuing to use that area model to understand multiplying fractions. But this time, we're really going to get into the standard algorithm where we take that, uh, the mixed numbers, change them into improper fractions. But we're going to do it in a way that's not just a rule that students are supposed to blindly follow. We're really going to do it in a, in a logical way that hopefully is going to make sense uh, to our students. So let's get started with this. So parents and teachers, this slide is for you and it's designed to help you as parents and teachers, the adults who learned the old way, to connect the area model that we have been talking about in previous videos with the standard algorithm that we learned when we were kids, the idea of, well, in order to multiply these mixed numbers, you have to first change them into improper fractions. And of course, we know that you don't have to change them into improper fractions because the previous videos, we've been multiplying just fine using partial products. Uh, but let's connect this area model with that standard algorithm that we learned when we were kids. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw in. So we've got we've got one and a third and three and three fourths. All right, but I'm going to draw in what that looks like. And there is our let's see uh, let's see if I can make this small here. Okay, so there's our one, and there is our third. And I did not draw it to scale. It's okay. We're not, we don't have to be perfect here. And now I'm going to do the same thing with three and three fourths. And so three and three fourths, oh, let's say is, let's do one, two, three. And then I want to draw in the three fourths and oh let's do a smaller pen and let's three fourths one two three so what do we have we have one here we have one here we have one here and then we have one fourth here and then one fourth here and then one fourth here okay so we can look at this now what that means is I can get rid of the mixed numbers because we we took them and turned them into uh, we decomposed them I suppose is what we could say one and a third three and three fourths all right now what is this one right here well because it's one and a third we could think of this one as really being broken up into thirds as well uh, because the denominator over here was three and so we could think of this one whole as being chopped up into thirds so really instead of having this one I'm going to replace that one, let's see, there, and instead of having this one-third, what do we now have? We now have four-thirds going on right here, right here. In the same way, we can do the same thing across the top. We know that everything's been cut into fourths, so I can cut this whole number right here, and this whole number, and this whole number into fourths. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And so now what you can see is what is a whole number? Oh, by the way, we can now take get rid of all of these, can't we? Man, I don't know how to do that. Let's see. Come on, go away. There we go. And then let's see. Come on, baby. I want to make that. There we go. Go away. Make that guy go away. Make that guy go away. <laughs> make that guy go away. And lastly, make that guy go away. Now I can zoom back. All right. And so across the top, instead of having three and three fourths, what do we have? Well, we have four fourths plus four fourths plus four fourths 
that's 12 fourths, that 3 times 4 is 12 fourths, and then plus 3 more fourths, so we now have 15 fourths going across the top. Now the idea is, what is one whole? One whole, each one of these little pieces is a twelfth. So one whole is twelve twelfths. How do we know that? Well, because we drew this box right here. This big box is one whole because that was one by one. And it's three little units going up, four little units going across. So there's twelve little units. So one whole is twelve twelfths. So really what's going on is, let's see, we have gone from... We started with one and a third times three and three fourths. But then we said that one and a third is really four thirds, and that three and three fourths is really fifteen fourths. Now, one whole is twelve pieces, because it's right here. Three by four is twelve pieces. So three times four is twelve, and that means one whole is made up of 12 twelfths. And that's why 3 times 4 makes sense. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, why does 4 times 15, which equals 60, why does that make sense? Well, that makes sense because we have 4 little units going up and down. We have 15 little units going left and right. So 4 times 15 gives us 60. So we have 60 little units all over throughout this whole thing. 12 little no. units equals 12 little units equals um, okay? one whole. So 60 twelfths right here, 60 twelfths is equal to five whole units. So that would be five inches squared is our area. So what that means is we've got three holes right here. Those are obvious right there. And if we put all these little twelfths together, we would get another two whole units in this case. And so that is why, parents and teachers, that algorithm, that old method works, is because we take our mixed numbers, change them into improper fractions, that creates these little individual units, these little pieces, and then multiplying across tells you how many individual pieces we have all together. We had 60. And then multiplying the denominators, 3 times 4 is 12, that tells us how many little units does it, it takes to make one whole. So now that you really understand why that algorithm works, we can just go straight to that standard algorithm. We, we could say, well, 8 thirds times 24 fourths. 3 times 4 gives us 12. That tells us each whole number is made up of twelfths. And we know that our area model is 8 by 24. And 8 times 24, oh, that's supposed to be a 2, uh, 192 twelfths. And so now we can divide 192 by 12. And that's going to give us, let's see, 6. 72, 0. So that gives us our answer, which is 16. And in this case, it's centimeters squared because we had centimeters by centimeters. So our answer is a whole number. It's not a mixed number. And I'm going to leave this for you guys to solve on your own. Here's, I thought I'd choose this one because, you know, it's a little on the tricky side. It's our mixed numbers. So we're going to start with our mixed numbers. I'm going to turn them into improper fractions, and of course there's nothing improper about them. They're perfectly fine. And so what I've done is I've turned 5 and 4 sixths into um, an improper fraction. It's 34 sixths. Now how did I do that? Well, I did 5 times 6 is 30 plus 4 is 34 sixths. Similarly, over here, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 3 is 23 fifths. And now that tells us that each whole number is broken up into thirtieths because 6 times 5 is 30. So each whole number is broken up into thirtieths, and our big rectangle is 34 by 23. 
So 34 times 23 is 782. And now we need to turn that into a mixed number. So we're going to do 782 divided by 30. And we can see that 30 goes into 78 twice. So that means we have 18 left over. We bring down that 2. 30 goes into 182 six times, so that's 180. We have 2 left over. So we have 26 whole numbers. That's this. And then we have 2 little units left over, so that's 2 thirtieths left over. And that's inches squared. Now parents and teachers, if our students want, they can certainly change that to 1 15th, 26 and 1 15th inches squared, but really this is what we're looking for. So here, pretty straightforward, Chris is making a tabletop with some leftover tiles. He has nine of these tiles. So the tile is one, 3 and 1 8 inches by 2 and 3 fourths inches. And uh, he has nine of them. We want to figure out what's the area. So it's a two-step process. First, we're going to multiply this, get our answer. Then we're going to multiply by nine. So I'm going to just kind of quickly go through just the beginning process. So I took each mixed number, turned them into improper fractions. And then our denominator is 32. And then 25 times 11 is 275. And now we need to figure out what 275 over 32 is as a mixed number. And really, we don't have to do it that way. At this point, we could take this, multiply the numerator by 9, and keep going. But I'm going to do it this way just because. So let's see. 275 divided by 32. So... We know that's going to be 8 times, and that's 256, and we subtract. That gives us 19, so that's 8 holes and 19 30 seconds. So one tile is this. Now what we need to do is take that and multiply by 9. So a nice, easy way to do that. Nice, easy way to do that is to say, well, first we're going to take the 9, multiply by 8. That gives us 72. Plus, now we're going to take the 9 and multiply by the 19 30 seconds. So 9 times 19 gives us 100. 71 30 seconds. Now we need to turn this improper fraction into a mixed number. So 171 divided by 32 and 171 divided by 32. 32 goes into it five times. Let's do a bleep. So 5 times 32 is 160 which gives us 11. So we end up with 72 plus, and then this is 5 and 11 30 seconds, which ends up being 77 and 11 30 seconds inches squared. So that is the largest area that he could cover with those tiles. Now this one looks crazy, but it's not really that crazy. It's just a culmination of a whole bunch of little problems. So the big huge gray area is right here and then you have to subtract out three little rectangles. So the the game plan is the big huge part huge is 19 and a half multiply by 31 and 7 eighths. So that's the big huge one. But then things to subtract out. You have A, B, and C. So A, you need to subtract out 13 and 3 fifths times 11 3 fourths. 
So you're going to multiply that, subtract from whatever you got up here. B is 12 by 3 and 3 fourths, so you're going to multiply that out. And then lastly, C is 17 by 2 and a half. So the idea is you're going to multiply these three together, multiply them, add them together, get your total, and subtract that from whatever this answer is. And that's the game plan. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of work. So parents and teachers, consider that if you're assigning this as your homework. And that wraps up. Grade 5, Module 5, Lesson 13, using that standard algorithm, but still connecting it to the area model.